Hey, welcome to Heroes Out. I'm Paul. And I'm Patrick. And And we're doing uh, Muppet Recasting. I I can't wait to do this episode. You know, if you've ever asked yourself, what would you end up doing if you had your own YouTube channel that really, let's face it, doesn't have any rules? Well, what you would end up doing is the self-indulgent move of just going, yeah, somebody said we should do uh, like recasting movies, but instead of you know, casting other actors, what would happen if you cast a Muppet in the role? Um, we took it. Uh, it was suggested last week. And here we are this week, Paul, we're going to run with it. How good does this feel? It's going to be interesting, i got to say, because, uh, yeah, I, um, I think I may have gone dark on this a little too much. Oh God! Is uh, <laughs> you know what, folks? I'm going to ask him. I'm going to ask him up front. I think also myself and Paul have not told each other other than Avengers because that was the original suggestion by by our awesome viewership. Yeah, uh, we haven't talked about what else that we would recast Muppets in. I have a bad feeling Event Horizon is going to show up. Um, <laughs> all, <laughs> he's laughing because it is, folks. Also, I have a funny feeling your fan was on a second ago, or else there was a ghost pulling at your hair. Yeah, no, there was a, my fan is on. Um... It's very warm in this room. I'm actually going to take. Yeah. I'm going to take my hoodie off. <laughs> hey, folks! You know, if you come in, if you get in for the late show, you get to see all the extra stuff. Um, join our Patreon, and more will more will come off. Is that how it works? I don't know. We don't have a Patreon. Um, so everybody out there that's listening, hey, I'm going to give a, a call out. So brew, waka waka, indeed, my brother. Um, right over behind me somewhere, I find my little fuzzy bobblehead, my fuzzy bear. Um, we've already got Kevin with uh, Chris the that Chris Hemsworth movie versus the whale, leaving only Hemsworth the whale as a muppet. Yes, but which muppet? Mm. But which muppet? So, folks, I think we should we should dive into it. We've got a few little bits of imagery to help help everybody out. And Ben, I do believe who's just joined us, you were the one to originally suggest this very first. I think so. Fair play to you. That's the magic of the internet. You say it, and next thing you know bang two idiot people uh do you know uh 30 minutes to 40 minutes of, of crazy talk about uh what muppet should have been in event horizon probably yeah. i tried to look at him and see if he was going to give one away so we're going to have to start with who the muppets are paul what yep. what what muppets are on the table what's our roster who's walking into the casting room Okay, so on our roster, and please let me know if you can't hear us because we're trying this whole new thing of, of switching all the all the overlays and everything. Um, which is so in our roster is the fantastic animal, who's a, a top liner here. We've also got Beaker, Beaker's great. We've got Doctor Bunsen, we've got uh, Doctor Teeth. Which I didn't know about, really. Yeah, Dr. Teeth from The Electric Mayhem, which is the house band of the Muppets. One of my favorites. Yeah. One of my absolute favorites. Actually, in the chat, if somebody can type that they can still definitely hear us, that would be great. Well, we'll, we'll yeah, they'll, I, they're I on delay, so it'll come up. I definitely checked. Um, so, okay. uh, Floyd Pepper, which is also a great one, um, which is Fonzie, one of my personal favorites. We got Gonzo. Which is also great. Is this this is Janice? Janice from the band, yeah. Janice is the uh, the guitar player, um, extraordinaire. Janice was based a little bit apparently on Janice Joplin, so the name is not coincidence. Oh, yeah, interesting. Uh, Jim Henson and, and Co. weren't they weren't hiding everything at all times. They were kind of doing nods to people. Fair play to them. Yeah, uh, our classic Kermit the Frog. I'm looking at the ah, yeah. smile there. The yes. also classic oh sorry no i was just gonna say kermit like talk about you know number one muppet he's like the originator the og muppet he is he is the the og muppet um and another og muppet is uh miss piggy of course she's that on again off again will they won't they relationship ross and rachel before ross and rachel existed kermit and piggy uh the drama um another personal favorite of mine ralph ralph is great um, which was one that made a feature last week, like pretty early on. Um, Sam the Eagle. He's hey. Really cool. um, Scooter. Uh, I can never pronounce the first one of these, of the duo. Um, oh, Statler and Waldorf, Stattler. is it? Statler. I can do Waldorf, yeah. never can do Statler. I don't know why. Um, he, they're also personal favorites. Uh, which For- is- 
for anybody who's never seen the Muppets, this is a little primer, but for all of you who have, we're just reminding you what their names are, because if we say a name and you're like, which one was that? This hopefully will have helped. And the, and the characters that they are and why we choose them will come up, I'm sure, in our own description of why we would do the casting. But let's face it, Statler and Waldorf don't need any explanation past a couple of critical grumpy old buggers uh, who used to sit in the rafters and uh, complain and make jokes about the show. Pretty much. Like, yeah, so it's what we should have called our YouTube channel now <laughs> that I think of it. Oh, that's clever. <laughs> um, our last but not least uh, is Zoot. Oh, Zoot, the other uh, band member. Uh, he was the, again, if I was making him up, but I'd probably make Zoot because, uh, you know, there's there's a lot of emotion to such a simple face. There's, there's a Muppet sitting still that looks like it's he has a thought and he's unhappy about it. That downturned mouth, it says a lot. It does, yeah. He's he's one of the best. Because uh, the only couple of times I've ever seen him speak, um, the only times I've, couple, I've seen him speak a couple of times is uh, when he's just giving words of wisdom. But it's like uh, it's actually like two, three words or something like that. I don't know. Yeah, and so. I'm gonna let my Muppet freak for my Muppet freak flag fly here, my nerd. Under that hat, Zoot is bald, so he has male pattern baldness. Uh, they went that far because there's once or twice where Zoot doesn't have the hat when he's when he's uh, hacking on the sacks, and it's like, yeah, they actually they actually left him with with bald in the middle. So quite, it was obviously inspired by somebody. I'm not too sure. Some musical person out there will will come back and go, it's this famous jazz uh, saxophonist. Hey, yeah, I said saxophonist and didn't mess it up live. <laughs> That's good because that could have gone really wrong if it mispronounced that. Um, so. I am going to just call over to the... Do you want to run over to the chat with me for a second, Paul? Uh, yeah. Paul. So, uh, we'll need Muppet to cross over between Sesame Street. Uh, that's Kermit. Which, oh, Kermit. Oh, Kermit's yeah. the, only, so Ses, the only Muppet to cross over from Sesame Street to the Muppets. I'm back. And I, and I see we also got nailed with uh, Hear Us Out are the Statler and Waldorf. Which uh, one? Wh- here, chat. Which one is which? It's whoever's sitting on the left right now is Statler. You know, that it's just, I, I think they're literally named in order because if you ask me which one was which without me looking at a picture, I'd be like, well, the one on the left is the one you say first. Waldorf is the one who's, I think he's the taller one. I'm not oh, sure. the Waldorf is the taller one. Well, then I can I be so. him? Because once or twice in my life, I wouldn't mind being the taller one. That's fine. I um, can be the taller so one. So if I have to do it through Muppets, that's how I'll do it. Go for it. Um, I will just say, Paul, that we got to get into this, but I, I'd like everybody to really participate in the comments down below if you're watching this recorded. If you're with us live, get stuck in there if you feel that they're crazy choices or there would have been a better choice. Um, that's Mar- a good one. Marley Sorry. and Marley. That's the uh, that's uh, Stathler and Walder from uh, Christmas Carol. Oh, okay. Okay. Sorry. Um, <laughs> I, I just realized that as much fun as I thought we were going to have, we've now opened ourselves up to huge amounts of ridicule. Yeah, I can't wait for the photoshops of our faces on top of those Muppets. That's going to be a fun one if we ever get it. Do, do it, do it. They'll end up being stuck up behind us um, and be part of the set permanently. So, Paul, I'm going to just ask, are we going to start with the Avengers or do you want to throw out one of your surprise castings? Because I have a funny feeling when you said Dark, was I right? I can't wait to find out. So, is Event yeah. Horizon something that you were thinking of recasting with Muppets? Yeah. Yeah, I did. And also followed the one... So um, from, from from some of our tweets and stuff like that, we said that we would do a uh, mostly Muppet cast and then one human. We're doing that kind of loosely. So some mm. of them will be full Muppets cast. Some of them will be the one, uh, one human cast kind of thing. Um, I have decided that my... Uh, my uh, I would have a one human in that in that uh, movie. So the Event Horizon. In Event Horizon. Has, yeah, has one human. Can you give everybody a quick reminder? Event Horizon was a dark sci-fi horror movie with Sam Neill and it has Sam Neill, uh, for, uh, Lawrence Fishburne, um, yeah. which goes on a couple of other names and a lot of body horror, a lot of uh, yeah. a lot of people's skin being stretched. Which, if it's going to be a Muppet, there's going to be some felt i guess being <laughs> being ripped and possibly shredded and stretched too far it's so be... come on who's who's doing your sam neil 
creepy as all hell. So this is the fun thing. Sam Neill. I haven't okay, changed you, Sam you Neill. Didn't, no, you didn't you want to scar him up it. That's good. You don't change you don't change Sam Neill out of all of them. Because like Sam Neill's gotta be the because the reason that I chose some of the darker ones is because I really wanted to go weird with this. Um which goes so I'm just gonna bring up my choices. Hang on one second. No, no um, problem at all. So, um, which is yeah, I decided that Sam Neill would say the same just because he's a it's a hilarious choice, um, which is, um, which is, um, so I'm gonna choose, uh, which is, um, yeah. So let's go for we'll go for we'll go for Lawrence Fishburne, our uh, our lead role, um, which is I decided not to put Kermit into this role, um, as the lead thing. I decided to put up, uh, which is Sam the Eagle, you know. Um, a stoic man, very good. I can I can um, see what you're thinking. Yeah, he's. Uh, you, you're which, being distracted by the comments, aren't you? Just so Rizzo, um, which is, uh, I know the rat, isn't it? Uh, but yeah, so I uh, wish um, yeah, Lawrence Fisherman would be Sam the Eagle. I thought it would be just an interesting kind of like change of pace to have Sam the Eagle as essentially the lead in in one of the episodes or one of the one of our movies, and um, which is uh, Jodie uh, Richardson, who's um, which is the lead female um, uh, actor. Obviously, I'd go with Miss Peggy. Oh, you're it's, okay. You're, you're sticking to to gender roles, okay? Well, I was sticking to it just because. Oh, let's not. Let's, I know, I know. I'm I'm absolutely internet bushwhacking you there. Sorry, that was that like, was messing around. Lieutenant, <laughs> see, Lieutenant Starsky is very, very strong. She's a strong female character, so I thought the like a very strong female character in the in the Muppets would be also the uh, mm. the strong. Um, Orange fish one, um, which is uh, Peters, who is also nicknamed as Mama Bear, um, which is is the is the other female, um, which you cast. I put her as Janice just because. Oh, um, nice. She's very overly, which goes uh, friendly, and she's a nice, she's nice, nice kind of thing. Janice is very, very chilled. As far as Muppets go, Janice is like the permanently closed eyes, very chilled, very kind of amenable. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. Um, she's very nice. Uh, DJ, who's um, which is played by Jason Isaacs. Uh, he is the ship's surgeon. He uh, in one of the one of the episode or one of the scenes, he just like rush up to one of the other guys with a knife to like calm him down and stuff like with a scalpel to calm him down. And um, yeah, I'm gonna put Kermit of the Kermit the Frog into that one because I thought it'd be creepy as hell. See, um, I, I instantly regret thinking, well, maybe, <laughs> you know, maybe because Paul has picked Event Horizon as the long running joke. Um, but now I realize we started off the episode with the darkest um, uh, timeline, essentially. Yeah. So that's Paul's like got Kermit the, um, Kermit the, the dodgy surgeon running up to people with knives. Nice. Yeah. Well, you know, you need to calm down some people, so you need to put a scalpel to their neck. I can see Kermit <laughs> doing it. Uh, which goes, um, Jack Nosworth. He's the um, he's a uh, baby bear. Um, he's the one who gets shoved out the airlock. Uh, which goes, I decided to put Fonzie Bear. Hey, Fonzie, good man. Because because he's the because uh, he's the old uh, baby bear. I thought it'd be funny to also see him. So he's the one who first goes through the gravity drive and into hell, and he is the one who gets shoved out of an airlock. So um. I love how different we are as people sometimes because I'm a dark guy, but you're like, I'm doing a Muppets episode. I'm going to do a thing with a gravity drive where people cross over into hell. I'm, I'm, I'm calling it now, folks, by the way. I didn't recast I, any of my favorite films like Jaws, 12 Angry Men, Cannonball Run, none of that. Um, I kind of regret that now because it would have been a nice counterbalance to uh, the body horror sci-fi space death machine that is event horizon so we got we got two more characters which which i'll go to in a minute but i'll be i'll be honest with you i did consider putting saw into this list like i can see, but, why. Hmm? I can see why but i decided i decided event horizon would be a funny would be a funny yeah. one um richard uh, t jones who's cooper he is the emergency he's the emergency health technician and um, which is he would be played by dr teeth um, ah, okay, yeah. So, because he was quite a fun <laughs> character and stuff like that. I'm I'm recasting this. In my, I'm rewatching this in my head, trying to swap these people in and out. It's a bit weird. All right. So, who was who was the remaining character? Uh, Sean uh, 
Pertway? He's oh, the, Pertwee, he's yeah. The, yeah, he's yeah. The, the Alfred in the, the Gotham series. Um, which is, he is called Smith. He's actually my favorite character of the event, or one of my favorite characters of the event horizon. Um, which is, and he would be played by Rizzo, the, the rat. Ah, because yeah, I, like I because I know Paul quite well. I know that not only is that actor one of Paul's favorites, but the character he plays in Event Horizon. So I was almost thinking you were going to give him the Muppet OG, the star, and that you're going to be like he gets Kermit because you know Kermit's the Kermit's the star. But I can kind of see the more um, wisecracking rat suiting it better. Yeah, Smith in that in that film is a wisecracking kind of like, I don't want to go anywhere. This ship is completely hard. Like, I don't want to go, you know. So, he's, well, he's as, so Rizzo as, would be the perfect one. As far as it goes, folks, let's take a quick look at the comments. There's nothing there. Nobody's just decided we, we you know, we're too grossed out by the idea of, of Sam Neill uh, getting his blood on the Muppets. Um, I think that was definitely worth keeping the event horizon theme that we've had since we started the channel going. <laughs> if we can find a reason to say, um, who's that director? Who's oh, that's Hora is my boy. Heads? No, no, I'm thinking of uh, oh, Tiki Thor Ragnarok, Taika Waititi. For a long time, we didn't have an episode that didn't have either event horizon or Taika Waititi mentioned. Yeah, that's right. So yeah, I'm, I, I, we got to give the people what we said we would. So I'm going to switch over to a little screen share for the Avengers portion, Paul. What do you say? Yeah, go for it. So. Um, and while I have things up, you let me know what you can see out there. So you should now be seeing, instead of me, you're going to see an Avenger symbol and a Muppet. Um, is that coming true for you, Paul? That should be coming through, yep. Okay, cool. Well, uh I think I will. What I'll do is we'll do them one Avenger at a time. How about that? Yeah. So that starting with Captain America. Okay. Do you do you want to give me who your choice was for Captain America, and then I'll reveal mine? Well, because I know mine says the image. Or give give us give us your choice. Does so, that suit? Yeah, no, that suits well. And which goes. Um. So my choice would probably. So I did choose. We did on the stream last week. Did say that Sam the Eagle would be a great fit for us. But um, I but would. Have... You want to be original? Yeah, I, well, not original. I kind of want to put Kermit the Frog in there just because I want a flashback of like him being put into the into the like the serum chamber and him then coming out as a big buff, huge, big version of <laughs> of uh, which is Kermit the Frog. Going but, uh... from like it ain't easy being green to it ain't easy being green. Yeah, yeah. that would be quite good. Um, much. <laughs> that's that's a good choice. And that is an original take because someone absolutely, as far as I'm concerned, as I reveal my choice, someone absolutely nailed it last week. There's nobody with Sam the Eagle. If you never watch the Muppets, you can pretty much um, sum Sam the Eagle up with two things. He's quite straightforward and quite patriotic. So good old Sam the Eagle here is Captain America in Muppet form because he's all... He's all patriotic and he's also all serious. Now, everybody knows Captain America being one of my favorite Avengers. You'd think I'd be picking one of my favorite Muppets. Sam the Eagle isn't one of my favorite Muppets, but it's it's just too good a choice. Too good a choice. Had to go for it. Um, so what have we got out there? We've got Muppets Assemble. Um, except Kermit will come out exactly the same classic Muppets gag. If Kermit was uh, put into the kind of super serum chamber, Ben is probably right. If if the Muppets were doing the Avengers movie, he would come out maybe one inch taller, and that would be the gag. No one would be able to tell. And he's like, "But I'm bigger." But I'm bigger. Yeah, he would be like, he'd be like an inch taller. That that's all he'd yeah. be. You know, before so. I couldn't see over the shield. I can see over it now. Um, yeah. My awful Kermit probably has to stop. I've just heard that <laughs> in my own headphones. So, so Iron Man, Paul, hit me with your Iron Man. Oh, see, I decided that it would be really, really funny to put Beaker into this. I can absolutely see why, if for no other reason than the helmet trying to close around that massive conical head. Well, yeah, first of all, you have to have a suit of armor that has to hold that pencil man. And uh, which is, and then on top of that, just having him constantly, because like in the Avengers, he, he, he gives some classic, like classic lines of kind of like, oh, you yeah. know, Billion, billionaire like philanthropists you know genius kind of thing playboy millionaire yeah yeah kind of which would just be funny just to do as a meeps you know well <laughs> that's true me, me. I, I i love the idea though the idea of i wish i'd pick beaker and i 
I'm kind of glad I didn't because it's good that we don't have crossover. But this scene of him coming up with his own super suit, making an Iron Man suit, basically just going and getting a length of industrial heating pipe and going, yep, that fits right over me. This is perfect. I'll just cut out a small space to look through. Uh, I am now Iron Beaker. Pretty that much. would be perfect. Like I was like so. Um, just to give you my the person who was coming quite close to that was Gonzo. No, oh. because Gonzo gets fired out of a cannon and stuff like that. So uh, does, yeah, you know. I can I can see that. Well, I I traded on your kind of Tony Stark being the funny guy a little bit, uh, so my choice was easy. For me, it was Waka Waka, Fuzzy Bear. Um, it's uh, the idea of having Tony Stark be like. You know, yeah, I can fly, except it's like, yeah, I can fly. Waka waka. <laughs> it, it just in my head, everything gets ended with a waka waka by Tony Stark, and it would really undermine the character's cool. Yeah, it definitely would. I have a question. Oh, please. Fonzie has the whole like talks to his finger. Mm. Would his suit Jarvis. also open? Like, would the finger also have a, like an opening thing that opens up so he could listen to it? it? Oh, maybe actually. But also, oh, he would start calling his finger Jarvis. That that uh, would be the gag I would go with there. All of a sudden, the AI would only be in the finger of the suit. I don't and, know. And also, not ever talk. Doesn't it? Does he ever mm. talk? Well, you see, maybe the finger was talking all along. They just and the Muppets they hadn't mic'd him up. You know, Paul oh. suspension of disbelief. It was just <laughs> our bad luck that we weren't there in the room to hear it. Very true, very true. Um, next up is Banner and the Hulk, and I've separated them because I, I want to know your before and after Muppet, or maybe you have one Muppet that you want to gigantize. I, so who yeah. is, who's your Banner Hulk? So if we're going to split them, um, I would probably put uh, Dr. Bunsen in this role. <laughs> can see why I considered it. Yeah, so like just just classic scientist kind of science. Like both of both Beaker and him are both scientists. Thought it'd be real good just to put give them give them their shoes and make them like cool. Or like not very really well, they wouldn't be really overly cool. But also the thing is that in in the Muppets, um, Beaker and uh, Bunsen are quite um, which guess are quite like uh, connected. They're constantly talking to each other and stuff like that. They're always with each other. In the in the Avengers, like um. Which is yeah, uh, Bruce and and Tony talk quite a lot. There's a lot of scenes with them together and stuff like that. So I thought it'd be another kind of good. You, you've paired that up nicely, actually. Yeah, so. and I I I'll be honest, didn't as you will now see when I click next. Um, yeah. I I didn't because it would be Fuzzy and Beaker. The reason I went for Beaker, i uh, just being honest. It's that sweet, lovable banner nature. I was like, ah, oh, that's that to me. That's Beaker. You know, the running around, plus the fact I love the idea that if you make Beaker mad or, you know, <laughs> he wants to, he can Hulk out. So even if and now I picked a different for the Hulk, I picked a different Muppet. But if that was going to be disallowed, if there's one Muppet I want to see gigantized and made uh, monster sized, it's Beaker. Yeah, that's true. I could definitely see us. The Meeps would be so loud. And oh, so yeah. angry. It would be such an angry <laughs> be I don't even know. Rape. It would be like, yeah, it would be like rape. Rape. It'd be just like, okay. I okay. love it. <laughs> well, I, I just I caught in the corner of my eye. Up next is Hulk, and somebody's already nailed what I would have thought was the perfect choice, but it's not who I went for. Uh see, um, yeah, see animal. Nora's a, called out uh animal. He's, he's a good choice. The best animal, choice, maybe. But animal I didn't go is for, a, what did you go for? Yeah, animal is a good choice. Um, which is I didn't go with them either. Um, which goes, which goes. I went with Ralph. Ralph the dog. Yeah. Um, the kind of deadpan piano playing, um, sweet ass dog. I I like that because Ralph uh, again for me one of my favorite characters because for me Ralph was kind of the audience a little bit since he was deadpan and sort of breaking the the fourth wall in that sense of I know how crazy all this is. And never get stressed. Rolf's big characteristic was he never got stressed by how crazy things were because he always had that kind of, it's the Muppets. You know, I'm a Muppet. This is going to be cool. I'm not really buying into the make-believe that we're doing here. Yeah. Um, I can imagine your uh, Rolf being Hulkized, as in uh, embiggened, I keep saying, but giganticized. That would be awesome. Just because of the big floppy ears Rolf had. 
yeah. those things except six feet long each would be if he, awesome. If he shook his head, he could probably cause a tornado. Like, That's it. He would be chaos oh. theory embodied. <laughs> well, I wish I'd gone for him, but I actually went for one that we didn't have a, a solo for. I went for a character called Sweetums. Oh. And this is a callback to anybody who remembers Sweetums. Now, when I was little, this is the when Patrick was little story part of the show that seems to happen every second week now. When I was little, I had a Muppets annual type thing. You know, they used to make those annual hardback books. Oh, yeah, yeah. And Sweetums here was on the back of it in one of the big group shots. So like all Muppets are, you know, a foot and a half to, to three feet tall. Sweetums is like seven foot four. Yeah, because uh, they made him to be bigger than humans who would be on the show. And I was feckin' terrified, terrified of Sweetums. Even though on the show, Sweetums is, as his name would suggest, a big, lovable, sweet bugger, which makes him perfect for the Hulk. Terrifying, uh, but deep down quite sweet. Uh, massive, but also uh, usually wearing ripped clothes um, because he's a bit... That is he, true. He, yeah. Anybody out there in the comments remember Sweetums? I can see some. Ben's already shouted out the name. Hands up in the comments if you remember Sweetums. And if you do, don't forget to hit the like and subscribe for Sweetums. And if you're watching this recorded, comment Sweetums down below because that's what analytics are all about. The word sweet. <laughs> I do have to say, because he's in Treasure Island, he's like one of those things where he's like, he comes out with a big, huge log and hits loads of them, loads of the pirates. And he's just like, I love you guys. They so, love you guys, so it, and I I love the way they operated that suit. Like, if you know, we're we could lose the whole show if we started talking about how great Jim Henson and all the works they did were, but just the articulation on this massive muppet was so adorable. Mm. They really captured the lumber and that that lower mouth movement thing. Yeah, like that, that's probably one of the heaviest apparatus. Probably a part of us was like the movement of that mouth. So yeah, that's awesome. So who have we got left? We've got Black Widow. Now, Paul. Now. Now. Who are you going for? Hmm. Consider uh, this carefully because today it was announced that the Black Widow movie has been pushed back to 2021. Uh, just being topical for the analytics, by the way, folks. Putting that in there because now we get to put it in our tags and hopefully this legitimizes us searching for views. Patrick is uh, Patrick has given us the old uh, giving you the 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 behind the scenes of our of our mentality. Uh, which the is, SEO heave ho, uh, which is so I didn't go with a a uh, uh, which goes a female Muppet. Oh, oh, good man, I, good man. I, I also went with uh, Rizzo. <laughs> <laughs> and then why did you go with Rizzo for the uh, Russian assassin? Uh, Black Widow. Because <laughs> I just want to see Rizzo play Black Widow in leather. So I thought it, like he's a he he because you know he'll break the third the, the fourth wall constantly and just be like I don't even know why I'm in this stuff. Like you be just I, yeah you know? I completely knew you were gonna say you want to see Rizzo in the latex the rubber the leather whatever the the material of the movie might be. be and it makes so, so much sense. Funny. Also, him being chased by now by Sweetums now down in the helicarry and stuff like that. That's just such a weirder. Yeah, like... true. Also, like one of Rizzo's kind of characteristics was the the little hands that kind of, you know, flop around, move around a bit. That in the kind of the Black Widow fighting suits would look fucking hilarious, especially with the whole bracelets that shoot shit. It would be one of those like real Muppet would... moment. Hey, everybody do Muppet hands. It's fun. Woo. Yeah, Muppet Hands is great. Do it at home. If you're not doing it, you're not you're not having fun. Um, uh, which is, yeah, I thought I thought Rizzo would just be a funny choice, you know, just a North, like you know, a New York rat having to play a Russian super spy. Well, well that's, yeah, well, you know what, the accent would have been as convincing. Hey, love you, Scarlett Johansson. You all did great with the accents. I picked Rolf. I again, uh, I didn't go. Everybody's thinking Miss Piggy or something. I picked Rolf. Simply because of that deadpan kind of the odd wisecrack. For me, uh, Scarlet Witch in the movies uh, got better and better and better from her introduction in Iron Man 2. Uh, but one of the kind of most Rolf moments was the scene in Ultron where they're all sitting around and they're seeing who can lift Thor's hammer. And nobody can lift Thor's hammer except for, uh, who was it that nearly moves it a bit? Uh, Hulk, uh, Banner, was Captain, it? No, Captain America. Oh yeah, it was Captain America. Sorry, you're right. Of course. Um, 
but when Black Widow's asked or Natasha is asked, she's like, that's that's not a question I need answered. That was the most Rolf moment ever in him in relation to the Muppets. He'd be like, hey, Rolf, we're going to do a blah, 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 blah. He'd be like, yep, playing the piano. Good luck with that. Take it easy now. Um, so yeah, Rolf is my Black Widow. Now that I have to think of him in the leather cat suit, <laughs> probably wouldn't have picked Rolf. Because it's a, it's a very round head to be protruding from tight leather. And those ears are too adorable for that job. So, well, there is a matching hair. You can see a theme here. That is true. You know? Yeah, they do have matching hair. It would seem. <laughs> but, uh, it's a bit of a stretch. Uh, so, Ralph and Leather. Uh, everybody's everybody's favorite um, Avenger. Some somebody's favorite Avenger, I assume. Somebody. Uh, the, uh, the internet's a huge place. Comment down below if Hawkeye's your favorite Avenger. Um, uh, I'll just I'll just go get my I'll just go get my partner. She'll she'll be oh like oh really? Yeah. I'm oh. gonna get an ass kick, and I've just got myself an ass kicking by accident there, folks. Yeah, Hawkeye is her favorite character. Is one of her favorite characters. Also, just just, a, just also to be a little bit topical. Um, Jeremy Ryan, uh, uh, sorry, Jeremy Reiner is uh, dropping a um, new uh, EP today at uh, tonight at twelve o'clock. Like musical EP, yeah, yeah. He plays. He okay. ha- he set up a. I've been watching him on Instagram. Uh, he has set up a whole new music studio up in his uh, in his crib, and uh, is really his. Some of the songs are actually really good. You should check them on Spotify. There you uh, go. You know what? Two things there. That's cool. Excellent info and trivia, and also SEO heave ho. We now get to see <laughs> Jeremy Renner EP, and hope people are searching for that. Um, um, and accidentally want to watch Muppets instead. I think it's how now you live or something like something like that. Just to say the name, so we can also put that. <laughs> nice, I like it. Well, who who did you go for? Who's your who's your Hawkeye? Who's your Clint Barton? So I decided that Gonzo would be a really really good really good moment in this just because Gonzo is one of those kind of Muppets who's kind of a little bit out there a little bit, and like it just feels like it feels like. Like Hawkeye is a little like I don't know what it is I don't know what it is about Hawkeye, but when you look at Natasha, you're just like yeah she she's in she's in the Avengers. But then you look at Hawkeye and you're just like, why is he in the Avengers? You know he's got a bow and arrow and stuff like that. When you realize that he's better armed than uh, Black Widow. Yeah, it, it's uh, look I I don't want to I don't want to pile on and start kicking. Um... The character because yeah I, I like uh, you know he's he's cool Hawkeye's cool I like Hawkeye don't don't want to be in trouble but that's about as enthusiastic as I can get so I gave him the Muppet I like least and the kind of back of the show um gopher slash person who is just annoying people and bossing them around and trying to get them to go on stage taking a lot of the some of the fun out of the Muppet sometimes I picked Scooter I was like to me Scooter is the Hawkeye of the Muppets. If you find me a kid who watched the Muppets and didn't go, my favorite's Gonzo or Animal or Kermit or Piggy or even one of the Electric Mayhem, one of the band. They're like, I want to be, you know, Janice or whatever. If you find me somebody who says, I want to be Scooter, I'm going to go ahead and say it's because they already own a green jacket um, <laughs> or something. Or they've already accepted the horrible, crushing reality of life. Yeah, and then you, then you really it. have to look at that kid and just be like, he's going places. <laughs> well, at least he's honest with himself. So, so folks, shout it in the comments there. We've 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 uh, we've not turned back. I'll, I'll stop my sharing. Um, we we took our time to get through that, but I think it was it was worthwhile. We said we'd do the Avengers. Everything else we're going to do, we'll do at a bit more pace and have a bit more of a laugh about. But well, that that is our obligation fulfilled. Now that people <laughs> ask for a commentary. Um, yeah. So, Paul, did you have another movie? Did you have another another something else that isn't horror by any chance that you were going to put Muppets in? I did. I thought it would be fun to put uh, Jurassic Park. Ah. So, so cast me your Jurassic Park real quick. Nice. So, first of all, all of the dinosaurs would be played by Gonzo's chickens. <laughs> so, so the raptors like tyrannosaurus rex you know oh, all of them sh- all of the animals literally all of the dinosaurs are just replaced Damn by it. the chickens like they're just different sized chickens see like, the, the laugh in my head or that came out so hard and i really hope it didn't do my weird giggle um 
is that dinner na 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 moment you know the out of the back of the jeep looking up at the brontosaurus if that was just gonzo's chickens just loads of different types of t- like size of chickens and stuff like that and they're just like oh, they exist again you sir are making that movie if i ever win the uh, <laughs> mega million bazillions just so that i can kind of giggle like the big big child i am i thought it would i thought it'd be funny you know yeah. i thought it'd be good um, that's awesome which goes so, uh, which is yeah. So, um, all the all the dinosaurs will be played by chickens, and um, which is Sam Neil will be played by the amazing, talented, awesome Kermit the Frog. Kermit um, the Frog. I decided just to continue on with his uh, trends as being the lead man, and Sam Neil is very much the lead man in that. And uh, which is, I also decided that uh, which is, um. Which is uh, Ralph would be playing, which is the I can't remember his name. Um, he is he's the the bad guy. Um, which is the reason the I bad, did. You know the bad the, guy the, in Jurassic Park. Yeah, you know the guy who like steals all the genetic materials of the dinosaurs oh, yeah, yeah. and ends up causing yeah. the park to go mental. Yeah. Um, which is, um, yeah, him. Like the reason I put it in air quotes, people, as well, is because there is like if. Like he the what's his name keeps going around the place saying that he spared no expense for the park, but he definitely did spare expense because he didn't pay that guy what he was worth. So, well, um, and as a dev- as a as a like as my day job being also a developer, I was just a, you know what I was I was going to have that crack, but I didn't know if you wanted that. I thought it was going to be like said like a true disgruntled developer, huh? Mm. That's yeah, yeah, but no, you're right, you're right. Sorry, I'm just messing. Messing with something on my side to make it easier in a minute when I show something. No so that, that's very rude. Um, um, which is my, um, which is so the kids, the kids would be played by, um, which goes uh, Stolten and, and Waldo. No, oh, very good, very because good. It, I thought it, I thought a running commentary of them constantly slagging everybody about what they were going to do and stuff like that, and their jokes, especially about them be old, like when the kid gets shocked off the fence. Like Walder for Sutton could be just like, oh my god, are you okay? And him just going, okay, it's the best I felt ever. My heart's beating again, <laughs> you know. Nice, just stuff nice, like, just stuff like that. Just constant them, like, just riffing on Did, on them being in the movie essentially. But particularly any time there's raptors chasing them and they're hiding in kitchens and stuff, it's like, what's with this raptor guy? Doesn't he know that the you know the Burger King's open down the road? I can't do their jokes right now. I just realized, <laughs> and I found I found that out live. That was terrible. That was absolutely. I'm sorry. Anybody who's watching, get your license feedback. What you um, do is you slag what they see. What they do is they slag the show, and then they slag themselves. So that's essentially mm. what they do. So they essentially like they'll say something bad about the show and then they'll be just like, but so am I, you know, something like that, you know? Yeah. It's just like, I think yeah. this, I think this show is flatlining. And so <laughs> am I, <laughs> you know, that kind of thing. Um, <laughs> More plans. Yeah. And yeah. um, we could, so yeah, I thought the kids would be funny as them walking around constantly being like, you know, essentially being like the oldest, I think the oldest Muppets, um, which was, yeah, um, pretty much. So, yeah. Um, I thought, that, nice. uh, which was, I thought, um, which is uh, the doc? I can't remember his name. The character, I think it's Doctor Show. He's the he's the lead geneticist. Um, in the thing, he, oh, he the guy in, that shows up in the later movies as well. Yeah, yeah. I'd have him as Bunsen. Makes sense. Um, which is, and I'd have uh, Sam uh, uh, Samuel Jackson's character as uh, Beaker, because once again, I'd also like to hear Beaker like with a cigarette in his mouth, like. Like say, hold on to your butts, but in me, so it was like me, 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 me. Um, yeah, I, I've just realised you could actually get Beaker to play almost any character in cinema history, and it would add at least either a layer of lovability, but probably take the gravity out of most scenes. Yes, yeah, so or that's... maybe inject it. You know, I don't know. It might make it even more um, intense if it was if it was Beaker. It... Well, yeah, like Beaker's a good actor. He could definitely pull off some really good stuff, you know. I'd like to see him do like uh, yeah. the King's Speech, or we've we've uh, got our next T-shirt, uh, and it's just Beaker has range, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Beaker has range. Um, 
Can can I throw it in then? I'm gonna I'm gonna switch back to some imagery. I just we're... have I just have Jeff oh, Goldblum's please. character would be which goes um I'm, this is the difficult one. I don't know who who would be like I was constantly trying to fret about who who would do it, and then I was just like it'd just be weird to just have like I don't know. Ah, oh, see, I don't. I'm still still confused about it. Because I've got two characters, Jeff Goldblum and um, which is Sam Neill's, uh, which is uh, partner. Um, the party would obviously be um, which is uh, Miss Piggy. I thought I'd take an easy one there. Uh, but Jeff Go- like Jeff Goldblum's like character in Jurassic Park is so difficult to figure out. Like I couldn't. Well, I was thinking Fonzo, or like Fonzie or or Gonzo, just because it would be really funny to see them do that. You know. Well, Laura Dern as Miss Piggy kind of works anyway, not just because of a, a gender similarity, but also the kind of nature of her having to give out to people for being dumbasses at certain points. Um, and because she's strangely drawn to a man who speaks funny, um, which is, you know, um, I'm not, not saying Sam Neill doesn't have an accent, but the man has an accent sometimes when you least expect it. He's never quite consistent, and that's sort of the Sam Neill draw. Mm. Um, but yeah, the Jeff Goldblum choice... I you know if I was to leave one human in that movie with with Muppets, it's going to be Jeff Goldblum, so that's, he can do his like he already speaks like he Jim Henson came up with him and he moves his you know he, he does that's his very hands. true ah we're uh, with dinosaurs it's like yeah you're you're already part Muppet dude I'm I'm gonna throw that to the also gonna throw that to chat so if you had to if you had to cast Jeff Goldblum's character in Jurassic Park as a Muppet who would you choose. So. Yeah, so who would who would muppetize the life life finds a, a way? Uh, that was more Shatner than Goldblum, maybe. It did seem um, that way. I wasn't gonna say it. Yeah. So. Impression's not really my thing, as we're all finding out together. <laughs> oh, it's difficult, man. So we're gonna um, share, you're gonna share your screen again. Yeah, I'm gonna oh. I'm gonna hit screen share now. So so hopefully you're seeing a classic movie, uh, an extreme classic in the sense of John Hughes. Classic hit, The Breakfast Club. And instead of going through this one by one and casting them all, we're going to be doing this much faster for these ones because that is just the house band, The Electric Mayhem. And as you can see, <gasps> Judd Nelson is the perfect animal. Everybody's wondering how long it took me to get like Animal in because Animal being my professed favorite Muppet, Judd Nelson. I can, I can imagine him delivering the Smoke Up Johnny line. And then he said, Smoke Up Johnny. It's like, yeah, just, yeah. No, Animal, definitely. The others just kind of fit as well. Like, when I was doing this, I was like, that whole band is The Breakfast Club. Um, anybody in chat who disagrees, say it now, because it's your last chance. I'm, I'm, That's the hill I'm willing to die on. That right there is the next Breakfast Club cast, so, if they ever do it again. Yeah, I think I think that's genius. Like, well done. That's that's a fantastic choice in, in Muppets. Uh, it's just, terrible it's, Photoshop, by the way, before anybody complains. It it's done uh, very. It's fantastic. Don't know him. Um, which is, yeah. So who would play the principal? Oh, see, that's where I took my one human. Because no, no Muppet has the articulation in their hands to do. You mess with the bull, you get the horns. Mm. You know, he, he did that weird threat and then used... One of cinema's all-time great weird hand gestures to use around kids, and I was like, "Hmm, yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna keep that as my my one human actor." And then my last question: Who's gonna play oh, the yeah. janitor? Oh gosh, <laughs> that's <laughs> that's a I'm good pull, one. Pulling out all my knowledge of uh, of um, which goes uh, of of Breakfast, Breakfast Club, Club, yeah, because yeah. the the janitor was a great character, one scene, but very very important. Uh, putting the little snot-nosed kids in their place, uh, doing his whole, you know, you kids don't think that I see, but I see, I see everything. Yeah. Um, I, you know what? Oh, I'm, I'm so tempted for it to be Rolf again. I don't want to reuse him, but I think Rolf would be that kind of, I am not part of your BS right now, which the janitor kind of was. Uh, yeah. That's a good. Oh, that's a good question. I'm gonna I'm gonna throw another one up because I just queued two in a row so that we could kind of get through them. Go for um, it. Couldn't couldn't help it while we're doing classics. Genius. Yeah, and this I'm hoping will set the chat on fire because before I reveal it, you've all got like you know 20 seconds to get in there because that's probably how long it'll take me to finish the sentence. Ghostbusters. There is no way to cast this correctly. 
Because if you go for Muppets, you're either going for personality, you're going for what they might look like. You, you know, it's it moves around. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, it does, yeah. What, what I chose, and I will reveal all at once, what I chose spans all of those reasons. All of those reasons. And for anybody who's wondering, that is, uh, that's the original, original cast. Here's your new Muppets. Now, Beaker is Egon. It's it really is just a pick based on on looks, and I hate to say it because uh, oh. I think Harold Ramis was an amazing person, but there's a certain conical shape to the man's head, so that works for me. Um, I think Winston, Winston was is, like he has to be Kermit for me because he's got that great line of, you know, uh, when when Ray thinks up the Stay Puft Marshmallow Man at the end of, of Ghostbusters. Spoiler warning. Um, he's like, if someone asks you if you're a god, you say yes. I want to hear that, and I apologize. This will probably be my last impression ever, but I want to hear that in Kermit voice. I want to hear, Ray, when someone asks you if you're a god, you say yes. It it tickles me inside. It makes me happy. Uh, Fozzie has to be Bill Murray's character. No one else, like, Bill Murray is a bit fuzzy at times. He's just got a bit of a, a, a rambling, bumbling, kind of cheeky laissez-faire about him. I like and it. Gonzo, like it. it's good. Gonzo writes itself. Like Gonzo is he's he's hopeful, but he's deluded, you know? Gonzo's got that kind of I could I can do this and then you know get shot out of a cannon and it doesn't go right. And that's a bit of the the Ray character in Ghostbusters for me. It all comes good in the end, but he is the kind of the hopeful Egypt in some ways. That's very true. Yeah, I like that. I like that Dan Acker is so what what do you what do you think? What would you who would you swap in or swap out? Because I'm going to give the chat two more seconds. I can't think I can't think of who I'd switch like switch in and switch out because like I think like yeah, Beaker is hilarious as as like as Egon Winston. Kermit as Winston is an interesting one because as you said the God part, but I also like the time when they're they're getting really busy and it's him and it's um. Winston and Ray are both in the uh, both in the the Ghostbuster mobile, and they're driving over the bridge. And he's just talking about uh, Winston's talking about how like the it's the dead rising from the grave, and it's the end of times <laughs> kind of thing. I just like to also see that hear that in, in Kermit the Frog's kind of voice, and with yes. Gonzo as well. It'll be an interesting kind of uh, interaction, I guess. That is true. That is true. I will. I'll. I'll tell you what, because we'll throw back to one of yours, so I'll stop sharing and I'll, I'll line up another one. Um, I, I'll I'll stroll to the chat while we swap our views. Um, uh, I think you got it right. Although Animal could have been played, <laughs> Animal could have played Bill's role. Yeah, and I I wanted to squeeze Animal into everything. I genuinely pulled Animal out of all my choices because Animal pretty much had been given every role in the history of cinema. Yeah, and kind, of, kind of did the same thing and and had to pull them. Like what I did was I filled Animals. Anytime I was thinking of a movie, I filled Animal like in into the thing. Then fill the rest and then remove that animal and then place it with someone else. So. Very good. Well, uh, I I gotta say, because I know uh Brew who's in the chat right now saying that that was good choices. There is no there's no way to underestimate this or undersell this. Brew's love of Ghostbusters is so big. The fact that he says they're good choices, that's that's a real pat in the back. I'm I'm taking that brew as quite the seal. You are Mr. Ghostbusters in a lot of ways, so fair play. Um Tell you what, I'm gonna I'm gonna throw up another or not throw it up, but I'll I'll queue it up. So Paul, have you got another one that you I had? have I have one more like I'm gonna do one more and you're gonna get a you're gonna get a theme here going on because like I went classic with Jurassic Park. Um I was going to do um uh, Back to the Future, mm-hmm. um, which goes, but I, I I kind of like dropped I dropped that one. Um but I decided that I do horror event horizon, um, uh, which is classic Jurassic Park, and then I decided that I really wanted one that would just be uh, I guess difficult for like everybody to have to like not difficult, but essentially just an interesting one to see Muppets take over, and that is Interstellar. Oh wow! Yeah. So you got a Matthew McConaughey. Hey, hey. I got like I got Matthew McConaughey. I got uh, I also got people for Tars and Mars, um, which is you know, um. <laughs> Shit, you you did it all the way to the the androids, the robots, yeah, the uh, 
the walking fridges. Yeah, I decided. I decided that the the, the walking fridges would also be hilarious because. Um, which goes, which would I they do, just be voiced by Muppets, or would they be? No, no, like, they'd be they'd be Muppets. I'd have them. I'd have them be Muppets just just because it would be just that would be ridiculous. Though, like with this choice, you could also you could also do a replacement of their voices as well, quite easily. Um, I'm going to start that. Uh, Tars and Mars. If you haven't seen it, other spoilers are uh, which is uh, uh, robots, um, weird cube robots as well, or bot, like rectangle robot kind of things. Um, but they would be played by um, which is uh, Startling and uh, Walford. Sadler and Waldorf, absolutely, yeah. of course. Why didn't I get there first when you said Tars and, and Stars or Spars, whatever it's it was? Tars and Mars, I think it's the, the Tars screen. and Mars. That's yeah, yeah, yeah. Because uh, they're wisecracking, um, which was Matthew McConaughey's character constantly asks them to reduce their uh, humor meter, uh, which is she's just like, let's just bring that humor meter down a couple of like percentage, you know. That's um, excellent. I thought it'd be fun. This is also one that I decided that I'll keep a character, a human character in, which, uh, okay. which is, I will, uh, I will bring in in a couple of minutes, and um, which is so. Um, I decided that Anne Hathaway's character would be Janice. I can, I can see it. I just want to see Janice. No, this is all just for me. I just want to see Janice have to explain complex gravimetric, like like uh, quantum and theoretical physics, like uh, which is explanations to everybody with you know Janice's voice because she's Janice she's, she's, she's chill. She's very chill. She's also quite nasally, isn't she? Uh, I I guess yeah, kind of yeah. Um, Isn't she kind of like a valley girl, kind of like, but not like you know stoner valley girl kind of thing. Yeah, a bit a bit beatnik valley, I guess. Yeah, that's ooh. Also, there's there's a definite kind of a funny kind of crossover that Anne Hathaway has, you know, the big eyes, etc. And uh, Janice is the exact opposite, who basically just has like eyebrows. Yeah, I did also think I was also kind of like I wonder if anyone will pull me up on that one. <laughs> well, it's, it's a it's it's a good a good juxtaposition there, uh, which is uh, which is yeah. So I, I decided that I'd go this the um, which is I'll I'll do hmm, let's see um, I'm not going to do the kids uh, which is mm. as in young Murph I was going to do as which is um, I like I I didn't kind of figure out who I would do as young Murph kind of thing. And um, which is and then uh, which is Tom, who's the the younger kid as well, who's played by um, uh, Timothy Charlemagne. Is he played by Timothy Charlemagne? That, he's the, so kid. he's the he's the older. So there's oh yeah, because there's there's yeah there's younger. If I have to remember Inter- Interstellar in my head now, you're gonna I'll turn into him up with though because that that movie is is long and it's been a while since I've seen it. So yeah, so um. Romley, um, who is played by David Geist or er, Geisa, uh, he is the which was um, he's the like planetar like the planetarian scientist. He's the one who gets left on the ship for for why they go closer to the black hole, um, yeah. and then they come back and it's just like he's like it's been two years. So when they leave, so when they when they're do when they're so it would be Doctor Bunsen, uh, which is I see where you're going. I, I I'm about so to see where you're going. It's Doctor Bunsen, and then when they come back, it's Doctor Teeth. Nice, so, nice. Um, for the rest of the journey, they have to deal with Doctor Teeth. Um, just so I thought it would be it would be kind of a funny one, um, which was uh, which was Professor Bradley, which is pay, played by Michael Caine. I would have as um, Beaker as well, because once again, he has to. He is some. Gr- Michael Caine in that film has some great lines. Oh, like, I did. really, I really have to see him, uh, him play that. Um, which is, yeah, not running through it too much. Um, which is, um, because I'll speed it up a little bit. Um, yeah. So, well, I'll just go to Cooper because I'll finish it off with Cooper. Um, which is, uh, not Kermit the Frog. I wouldn't do Kermit the Frog. Um, which is this is for the Matthew McConaughey yeah. star role. Um, which is, I, I would really like to see. Uh, which is Gonzo in that role, which would either Gonzo or Fonzie in that role. Mm, I'd probably go with Gonzo just because he, someone's going to have to stand there shouting Murph for a while. 
um, and then ruin the film at the end by saying it was like it was all about love or whatever the hell. Mm. Um, sorry, I still have my interstellar issues. We've we've talked about that before. Really? Love that movie till someone was like, well, no, it's all really just love. It's like, no, there was a lot of really interesting science going on here. Stop it. Stop it. I, I enjoyed it because like once again I was told that I would not understand that film when I went to watch uh, why it. Why wouldn't you understand it? Well, it's, like uh. I, I I get it in the sense that a lot of people were just like were just like I don't like there's a little bit of time travel in it and there's a little bit not and stuff like that and the explanation of what a tesseract is it's a four dimensional shape mm-hmm. and stuff like that and people were just like I don't understand and it's just like well. You, know, you don't watch a lot of you don't watch a lot of sci-fi then, which yeah. both of us fall into. I, I would have thought somebody would go, Paul, you're the you're the one that's going to get this because this is your bag, you know? Yeah, yeah, like right right after the show, it was immediately just like, did you get it? And I was just like, yeah, what's well, not to get? He was forced into a four dimensional shape, commonly known as a tesseract, and um, which is unlike the Avengers movie tesseract, which technically also is the same device, just to say. Um, there you go. Oh, okay, right. I'm 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 cutting you. I'm cutting you off now because we're, <laughs> you're about to insult a friend. Because I know it must have been somebody who could be watching that could be with us. I'm cutting you off. I'm cutting you off. Um, I, what I will say is, you, anybody that's going to play Matthew McConaughey, there's going to have to be a certain swagger to them. So Gonzo, I reckon, out of the your Gonzo, Gonzo uh, fuzzy bear kind of choice, mm. I think Gonzo could probably have that. Um, swagger too. I would think that like um, another good one would, would probably be Ralph as well. Ralph could have been a really good one as well just because he's once again that indifference is quite funny just to have him just have him in a ship just randomly being completely just not caring. Well you know? uh, of the people that are, are still watching this we, Nora has kindly entered uh, Pepe the King Prawn needs to make an appearance in a movie and actually if I was going to choose one of the things we've talked about tonight Interstellar would be that movie just because you know he's the 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 little dude with the small mouth opening thing, we didn't actually show a picture of him. I think earlier. Um, sorry, that was that was my fault. I was doing graphics and I missed him. Um, he would be quite a good Matthew McConaughey. Um, ju- just because the a level of shouting the same word that Matthew McConaughey has to do at certain points in that movie, or just shouting in a in a gasp sort of way. I love the idea of the little king prawn mouth. He could be a really good Tars, though. Yeah, oh, he could. Do. If you're going to, if you're going to do like Gonzo as Matthew McConaughey, you could do, mm. you could do uh, King Prawn, and also you could Rizzo would also be a good choice for uh, for Matthew McConaughey's Cooper as well. That'll be a good one, actually. Well, well, I I'm going to jump to a quick screen share and just close out my last ones in rapid succession. So don't worry, folks, your 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 bedtime's not going to be destroyed. And if you don't recognize the movie, then I don't know where you've been. It doesn't say it here, but this is the three main leads from Goodfellas. One of the all-time great movies. Scorsese's best in... Well, best is tough when it comes to Scorsese. Wish I hadn't said that. Now I'm going to go off on a tangent. Pulling myself back. Pulling myself back. (laughs) This is one where I took the out. Whoever it was that suggested the whole and you can keep one human... I, I I lent into that hard, but it's more because I want to see the interaction between these three. Uh, Ray Liotta's classic monologues, you know, the, um, uh, like, as long as I can remember, all I wanted to be was a gangster. You know, worse, I don't want to be a nobody. Being a made man's great. I can imagine Kermit the Frog doing that because that was such a Ray Liotta's voice. Again, and I'm not going to do my Kermit Frog of, well, as long as I, yeah, you know what I'm going to do. As long as I can remember, <laughs> I wanted to be a gangster. Um, that, that's my, you know, my Kermit's getting better. Proud of myself. Your, your Kermit's <laughs> good. Like, it's like what you're saying about, you know, your whole, like, I can't do voices and stuff like that, like, or impressions. You're doing Kermit real, real well. Like, it doesn't sound good in here, I'll be honest. But <laughs> you, you can imagine Kermit doing all those wonderful voiceovers and especially the coke binge at the end where he's running around oh. and the, you know, the DA are like in choppers and he's just being frantic. I can, I can see the Kermit character pulling that off, but more importantly, the, am I a clown? Do I amuse you? Joe Pesci folks. Yeah. Fuzzy. Just for that scene, just where he's like, what am I a clown? Do I amuse you? Am I here to amuse you? I can see Fozzie delivering that and just completely destroying. It'll be, I, it would be perfect. 
it would be such a weird different scene. It would be such a nice, nicer yep. scene. It would not be in any way like threatening. Especially you know? because at the very end, instead of you know telling Ray Liotta that he's messing with him, that he's not really getting angry, instead of going, you know, I'm just breaking your balls, he'd go, waka waka. Yeah. And that's it. Diffuse the situation with a waka. And why do I keep De Niro? It's because when De Niro was good, nobody should replace De Niro. Like that's the De Niro that we we needed to, you know, remain and not be dirty grandpa or whatever he is now. Um, and I also I just you know, him him talking to other Muppets going like, what did I tell you? What did I tell you? Don't don't go spend money. Don't, you know, don't be drawn attention. If the whole cast was Muppets around him, it would be perfect. Yeah, no, I definitely agree. That sounds, it's, it's, it's a fantastic, like, as you said, good, like, like, good, like, Robert De Niro is good. Like, yeah. so, like, you can't really replace him with, with a Muppets, really. Nope. It's also, it's hilarious. it would be hilarious to see them have to interact in any kind of way, you know. Well, especially you know, whacking somebody and putting them in the back of a car, um, because the like the trunks of cars are so high. <laughs> I can imagine there being a point where De Niro's like, "Are you going to lift some of the body?" And they're like, "We are, we are." Yeah. <laughs> um. Next one that I threw in real quick was uh, Forrest Gump. Um. I should probably shout who your to you who your casting would be before I reveal mine this time. Forrest Gump. Ooh, who will I have as Forrest Gump? I'd probably have Fonzie Fonzie as as Forrest Gump. Um, Lieutenant Dan. I'd probably have as. Ooh, I'd probably have as Rizzo just because I'd like to you know just because it'd be interesting to see him. Um. Well, I only I only did main character. These graphics, they were all just done okay. fast to fill this in. And it's ah, Forrest nice. Gonzo. Because Gonzo is, again, you can imagine him messing up things, but still continuing on to have amazing adventures and have luck go his way um, when it seems like luck isn't. I, I, You know, that's a movie I would still watch. I that's, would, that's I would a, absolutely watch. That's a perfect one. I really like that. Gonzo is as far as go. Oh, and actually, sorry, I will I will fix my screen sharing now. Uh, my last my last ones. I'm going to fly through this because you're going to guess a theme. That's Bill and Ted. Who would you do as Bill and Ted? Damn right, you'd do Statler and Waldorf. <laughs> Good, I like. That's it. the Blues Brothers. Who would you do as the Blues Brothers? Damn right, you'd do Statler and Waldorf. Just gonna... Men in Black. <laughs> you you can fill in the rest. Statter and Waldorf. Did you do? Oh, uh, did you do Wild Wild West? No, I didn't. You but didn't I, I, I think I finished it with this one. Face off with Statter and Waldorf, just for that face off scene. Like uh, the idea. Oops, I'm back round. The uh, yeah, I, I had about fifty million Statter and Waldorf ones, <laughs> um, genuinely. So I, I just had to stop. Like at, at one point, I was going to do all of Star Wars. Just so I could get to C three PO and R two D two being Statner and Waldorf. Oh, see, that's a, that would be a great one. So I'm I'm going to stop me sharing now because I know we've gone over and we got we got to start. Oh, start going back to the show. So yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, see, this is the thing. Someone suggested that we should recast a bunch of movies using the Muppets, and we delivered. We did a whole and bunch we... of movies. We did. We 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 kept true to our word. Now, was it good, YouTube? We don't know. Was it responsible, YouTube channeling? No, it certainly wasn't. No, it wasn't. But was it something else that you're likely to have seen tonight or somewhere else on YouTube in this format by two people who could quite legitimately be Jim Henson creations? No. You just witnessed history. So, um, which is yeah. So, uh, which is as you can see, we we will take your suggestions, like, uh, which is and your and your comments and your opinions, uh, which is, uh, with a great weight that uh, we'll probably do yeah. a show about them. So, um, yeah, if you want to suggest anything else that you want us to to do, and uh, we would love to, uh, which is um, take on that challenge. I'd say, uh, which is, and um, yeah. So, comments, comment down below on this video. Um, which goes, uh, you can either tweet us at um, Hear Us Out Tube as well, 
We're also on Facebook as uh, H-U-O uh, Tube and on Instagram as well on Hero Site Tube as well. So if you want to give us some suggestions and stuff like that. Um, Loads check, of ways to get in touch. Yeah, or check out any of our videos and stuff, you know. Yeah, do check out our video library. Trust me, there's a lot less Muppet and a lot more organization and sense. But you know what? I think a little bit of Muppet helps things. I think a little bit of Muppet's good. Can we close out on the last chat that we received then yeah. uh, as our last act? Nora asks, who would you both <laughs> who would you both have <laughs> play you as Muppets? Mm. I almost feel like we should choose for each other, but I think maybe just so that we can continue being oh. friends, let's choose for ourselves. No, let's choose, let's <laughs> choose, let's choose. Because I can't think of like because my automatic is my like I will choose for you, just but my automatic thing would be yes. for would be animal just because I'd be kind because I know he's your he's your favorite Yay. favorite Muppet, and um, but I would have to choose ooh, because mm, oh Fonzie probably Fonzie yeah I, you know I would I would love to take Fozzie Bear actually uh, he's he's sitting over there on top of that camera I just realized while we were talking where he's he is that's a little buzz a little bobblehead. Oh, I don't know if you can see it on screen, but yeah, he's just over my shoulder. And animals with us at all times. Who would I pick for you, Paul? I gotta be honest with you. I would probably pick. I would probably. Hmm, God, it's tough. I like. I'm tempted to say Kermit because he's like the OG Muppet, but I, I, I think I'd give you a Gonzo as well because you have a. I think you have an affinity with Gonzo. Um, Gonzo's good. I like Gonzo. Yeah, and and also. Let's face it, if we were to be made Muppets, it would only increase the chances of us getting viewers. So if anybody from the Jim Henson workshop is out there and can loan us a good animal or any of them, we will start doing the show as hand puppets. Because um, <laughs> if, I'm getting that desperate to boost our SEO. <laughs> if if you were just, yeah, if you were just, this, like, yeah, some, for some sort of reason, the Jim Henson, like, you know, group were seeing us and they want to make Muppets of us. We'd be yeah. fully happy. Could you do me a favor? Muppet. Could you make me taller and thinner? Just, you know, while you're making the Muppet. Like, ah, you're <laughs> fine. Um, oh, thanks, dude. All right. Well, then, um, I would like to say, on behalf of the boys in Hear Us Out, uh, like, scrub, subscribe, share. Thank you so much for watching. Hope you had a lovely show. And on that note, I've been Animal. And I've been uh, Kerbis. <laughs> No, no, or Gonzo. 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 Yeah, Gonzo. Yeah, Gonzo. And uh, we've been here aside. <laughs> and I'll see you later. We'll see you later. I was going to say, I'll see you later. See you later. Bye. Do what Muppet Thanks, hands one more time. Muppet hands one more time. Oh, do you hear that crack? Mm.